Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, we are going to get started promptly at noon. Hello everyone, thank you for being prompt and logging in. Uh, we are going to be starting at the top of the hour uh, in just two minutes. So please settle in, get comfortable and we'll be with you in a few more minutes. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to our engineering webinar series. We hope you, your family and colleagues are all safe and healthy during this challenging time. My name is Louis Smith and I am a customer consultant for Canada at Elsevier Engineering Solutions. It is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Kerry Berglund, who will talk to us today about GeoBase and GeoRef better together. Please write your question in the question and answer queue, which will then be answered at the end of the session as time allows. But before we start, I will launch a brief poll and ask if you please give us an idea about GeoBase and GeoRef product usage. We'd uh, be grateful if you could uh, just fill in the poll at the appropriate responses. Okay, we have some information coming in. So I'm gonna end the poll now. So great, Kerry, it looks like uh, there is a mixture of people who have used a GeoBase and GeoRef before, and some people are also familiar with the engineering village platform. So with the, anything else to say, just uh, give you the 
opportunity to start the presentation. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, thank you for the introdu introduction, Lewis. I'm so pleased to be here today to talk to you about two of our geo-based um, are two of our geobase databases, A and I, abstract and index databases. Um, so, without further ado, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. Um, so, my name is Carrie Berglund. I'm an engineering customer consultant at Elsevier. I graduated from the University of New, ha New Hampshire with a BA in music and vocal pedagogy. Um, previously to Elsevier, I was a regional manager at Cabletron Systems in, Terrac in Terraces, and then further in my career, I joined Novel. My roles have always been in technical consulting and sales for the information management, hardware, and software technologies for corporate, academia, and government sectors. With an occasional, with an occasional opera performance on the side, um, what I have the responsibility of at Elsevier is the portfolio of the US government for the engineering group. I'm an avid traveler and seeker and I'm blessed to work with some of the most talented team members, um, team customer consultants at Elsevier pictured here on the lower, the lower right. Um, this picture is prior to an adventure that I all talk them into going, going on uh, after hours, good sports. So for those of you that are not um, already familiar with Engineering Village, a very quick recap. Um, Engineering Village is a search and information analysis platform specifically designed for engineering research and is used within the academic, corporate, and government markets. The platform consists of 13 databases. Um, it is the most comprehensive engineering literature and patent, patent databases available and covers about 190 different engineering disciplines. In addition to great content, AV contains tools to speed research, enables engineers to analyze information, generate new ideas, stay up to date in their research field, as well as to identify emerging trends and industry experts. Elsevier has consistently maintained a 100% customer retention of the top 20 global and US ranked engineering universities. So when you hear the name AV, um, it's truly a highly resourceful and intricate plate I like to call it a plate that the data integrates with. So at this session, at this session um, oh, well, I guess, and ultimately, you're, it, the whole goal is to get something done in as little time and with the least effort possible to allow the resource really to work for you. Um, so as the session, at the session, and many sessions in this series are being represented by your customer consultants in the field, you'll often hear us talk about the GeoDuo. It's, uh, it's a bit of a slang um, for Engineering Village. Um, we even sometimes will say the GeoTrio. Uh, what I hope to demonstrate today are just some of the strengths of searching the GeoRef and GeoBase database on the EV platform. This is a dynamic duo, but what many don't know is there's an element added and powered by the GeoFacets database that is unique to Engineering Village, and we'll demonstrate a little bit of that today. These databases are truly companion databases. And this is a really nice comparison of the sorts of resources that we'll discover in these abstract databases. But certainly not necessarily, um, it, it's, it's not necessarily GeoBase and GeoRef like, is like many of the other databases on Engineering Village. They are um, truly alive and growing and developing with additional sorting capabilities every quarter, every year. So one of, the, one of the beauties of having these side by side is to see how information is being added and then also actually being extracted, if you will, as further bits of technology come to, come to play. Um, so let's take a little bit of a deep dive down into e what each database represents. What are the numbers to date and what's the flavor of the index? Um, GeoRef is an abstract and index database produced by our partner, American Geosciences Institute. And as you might, might consider that that's the name implies, it's a true geology, geo, geography reference data in various publications. It flows all the way back to 1666 and gives us a window into publication focused on geology, hydrogeology, structural geology, engineering geology, to date, there are over 4 million rec records represented, and of course, this grows every week. The second database we're talking about today is GeoBase. 
And that certainly encompasses, this is actually a um, 1973 to current day. This is an Elsevier database, abstract and index database. And I, in shorthand, like to think of this as the human element of geology, geography, um, geomechanics, development, oceanography. So a, a little bit more of the human aspect and how it affects some of those references, mat referenceable materials that you would maybe exclusively find in a GeoRef. So it really does make it a very nice companion database. And as you can see, um, up to date, we have over 4 million records in GeoBase, which considering the um, GeoRef is approximately a little bit over 4 million as well, but a longer breadth of content, um, that is actually pretty impressive. So again, um, kinds of content are growing every day, but I would say the lion's share of what's in here is the uh, journal article or the conference article. So I'm going to give a little bit away, away of the spice of what we're going to talk about today that is unique to these particular databases on the Engineering Village platform. Um, so we actually have a special feature uh, that is a mapping feature. If you're familiar with utilizing our databases on Engineering Village, this is very different. Um, it isn't necessarily associated with Compendex or Inspect to date. Um, it facilitates discovery of features or locations not initially associated with a topic and really kind of encourages that third dimension of insight. I will go ahead and demonstrate some of the interesting elements you can discover with, with that feature as we do our demonstration. So in order to do a meaningful demonstration of our GeoDuo, let's choose a subject that's really sustained research and truly a global concern. The loss of our forests from a global perspective is such a concern for all life on this planet, and in particular with the recent fires in the Amazon, have even made some recent international news. A worthy subject to understand and hopefully be able to innovate on future techniques for protection. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop over to Engineering Village. Now, hopefully, if all of the technology gods are working well, um, you are seeing the Inge Engineering Village platform at this time. Um, today, I'm going to choose to search information in GeoBase and GeoRef, which you can see is already checked off for my, for, for my ease. Um, what I did was I am a registered user in this product, so I can set preferences at any time as to the databases that I want to that I want to utilize any given day. I can switch that out at my leisure. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and type in, start to type in deforestation. And what I love about the quick search is it does have the capability to do an auto suggest. And so I'm going to save myself a little time and I'm going to take the platform up on its suggestion and choose deforestation. As I click on this term, I can see that I have a very healthy amount of abstracts to consider. I have over 16,000 records to sort. Um, I'm really though, I'm pretty interested in understanding how climate change is affecting deforestation. Now, lucky for me, um, there are some suggested terms that I can go ahead and click on climate change. If perhaps that wasn't there, I could go ahead and add another search field, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on climate change and start to parse down some of my results. Now, immediately I'm down to 1700 results or so. Um, now, I just wanna point out that at any time um, when, I'm, when I'm doing some sorting on these, on these two search terms within these two databases, I, I chose and, it defaulted to and, that's what I wanted, but I could have done or, I could have done not, which would have given me very different results as you, as you might imagine. Um, so at this point, let's take a look at the unique mapping feature on the facets on the left-hand side. I'm just gonna center us a little bit. So as you can see, this is a representation of these abstracts all over the world. Uh, the way that that is, that is deciphered um, has to do with particular fields in the abstracts themselves. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. Um, but if I hover over each of these points, you can see that it's representing a certain number of records, lots of records in Brazil, 
Um, and if I chose, if at this point I had made a decision that perhaps I really was just interested in taking a look at some of this information in China, I could dive down and take a look at just those results from this very point. Um, another feature to show on this, this is a satellite view. So this is actually Google Earth, um, Google Earth powered. I could also change the view of my map for terrain. So getting back to that, um, we're going to come back to the map, but I wanted to quickly show you what the view looks from this point. And I'm going to actually go ahead and see if I can focus down a little bit more. So at this point, I do want to point out um, that I am interested in understanding a little bit more about a geographic term. So what I'm going to do is scroll down and I'm going to come to the geographic terms facet on the left hand side. And right from the get go, I think we can see that Brazil is um, pretty significant, but I'll go ahead and click and we'll take a full breadth of, of what uh, we have to offer in this space as far as sorting. Um, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit to show you the full breadth. Um, if something like a list isn't to your par, you can look at this from more of a, of a graphical point of view. I, in particular, really like a graph. I really like a, a visual. It helps me um, very quickly determine where I want to flow to. But um, I'm going to go ahead and choose Brazil. I'm also going to choose the Amazon River and the Amazonas Brazil as well um, to par down my search to those terms. So I'm going to limit it. So now I am down to 159 records. And at this point, let's take a quick look at the map. Let's see what happened to that map after we've gone ahead and made this view. So indeed, um, our abstracts are all focused on the country of Brazil. And it is. Uh, We'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this just to give you a better view of what that looks like. Um, a real fun little feature on this that uh, I wanted to point out, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm not sure how many people really play with this, but um, for those of you that are Google aficionados, you may recognize this, this dude in the corner, um, or dudette, hard to say. Um, this is the peg man. And what I find very interesting about this is even within this resource, we can take the Pegman and we can drag him and get a street view of different locations within the map. And I'm going to go ahead and let him go there and it's going to show me a geographic map. It's going to show me, I'm sorry, a picture of the area that I was, I was hovering over. And um, I can even go ahead and rotate my view. Looks like a nice little garden, actually, with maybe a little shop across the way. Um, but the reason that I point this out is this is another element that if you just needed a quick snapshot of a certain area um, to what it was represented, at least in Google Earth, um, this is a way to do that, right, within the Engineering Village platform. So um, going back to some of my results, to my details. So GeoRef and GeoBase do definitely have slightly different data um, I've learned in the, in the abstracts themselves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek at one of the, uh, one of the abstracts in GeoBase. This one happens to be in GeoBase. Let's go ahead and click on it. And I'm gonna look at the detailed abstract. So a couple of things to point out here. This really does have all of the fields that you could ever want and more when it comes to details about what's available in this article and in this abstract. And I'm just gonna slowly scroll down to show some of those off a bit. Um, but I wanted to point out that um, one of the really useful features, at least in GeoBase, that comes up in the fields are the classification codes. I really like those. I could at this time, because it is bold, I could click on either of these classification codes and apply my results to that specific classification code again in GeoRef and GeoBase. So very handy, another way to go. Um, the mapping capability of this particular article actually comes from the field, um, the, we call it the geo field for short, but it's the geographic term field 
and Amazonia, Brazil, um, that is where it is represented on that map. And I think it's kind of interesting to point some of that out. Uh, as I'm scrolling back up, this next feature applies to both of the databases, but you do have the opportunity on the platform to go ahead and take a look at citation information or some of the same data on the same article within Scopus. So how, how impactful is it from a scholarly point of view, um, citation data and all of the benefits that are available in Scopus. But then we can also utilize, um, see details on the plum metrics, which gives you essentially that added element of social media and captures and just other, other parts and pieces that aren't necessarily something that would be um, considered scholarly necessarily. So tweets, we all wanna know how much something has been tweeted upon, uh, important aspect. So I did want to point that out. That is the power of the platform for both databases. Seeing that together, being able to dig in a little bit deeper, just gets you to your end result in a, in a faster, more efficient manner. So now going back, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to hold my, hide my uh, meeting controls. And I'm going to go back. Actually, you know what, we'll do this. I'm going to go back to my results. Now, I guess I could have taken a bit of an easier way to get there. I could have gone to my search history and just kind of flipped back, but this is something to show you as well. Um, you know, every move that you're making, of course, it's being, um, it's being copied up here, and you can go ahead and manipulate this at any time if you want to change your results, but if you really get lost and your back button isn't working, the search history is going to be all captured right here. Again, always it's because I'm, I'm a registered user, so the product is doing that for me. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more and I'm just gonna show you a GeoBase, I, I'm sorry, a GeoRef abstract, just to show a little bit of the difference in comparison. Now in looking at some of these, some of these results, I really like land use. Land use change increases stream flow across the arc of de deforestation in Brazil. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that detailed abstract. Give it a minute to think. So again, um, plum metrics like we had on the GeoBase, tools in Scopus like we had on the on the GeoBase. Um, but scrolling down, we can see that the details of the abstract are a little bit different. It kind of makes some sense. I mean, this is more um, of a geology-based uh, resource, so to speak. Um, so it, I don't necessarily see some of, those, some of those classification codes, but what I do see are a lot of really great index terms. So that's actually a bit more varied than what I have in, say, GeoBase. Um, there is an uncontrolled term, which is really useful. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is indeed the mapping capability that we have, in case you were curious, again, where that information was coming from, um, this is more of a coordinate-based a coordinate -based, um, locator uh, as far as fields are concerned. Now, I'm gonna, I, it would be easy to say that all in GeoRef are coordinate-based coordinate and all in GeoBase are, are um, geo, geo field based but that isn't necessarily always 100%. You may have both actually in GeoRef, I'm told. Um, although I haven't, I haven't searched all 4 million, so I'm, I'm bound to, to, uh, to believe that from some of the developers and experts in this particular, particular database. So now, again, I'm going back to my results. I'm going to go ahead and show you um, what we kind of consider. Uh, I, I would say we most of us consider kind of that last element before um, we're interested. I've got to go back one more time. Before we're kind of interested with kind of calling it a day and we're and we're going to the, these are this 159 records is something I'm gonna I'm gonna take more time on. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this search. I'm going to create an alert so that the product will let me know when something else comes to the two databases that's of interest. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and dedupe or remove any duplicates that may be lying within this data set. So that will really give me a nice firm um, view. So I'm not, I do have the capability to do field preferences. I'm, I'm not going to do that for this. Um, I also have the capability to uh, have a 
database preference. So I'm going to default to um, GeoRef being the database preference above for the dedupe, um, just, just really a preference, not, nothing more. Um, I'll go ahead and start the process. And what we have here, here's our initial search, our original search. We had two duplicates that were removed and we removed them out of GeoBase. So out of our 157 unique records, 147 of them are in GeoBase and 10 of them are in GeoRef. Now, you know, ultimately uh, is that, what is the power of that? Of course, it's the fact that you're really able to, um, you know, you're really able to get down to exactly what you were looking for. Um, another, another piece that I wanted to point out is that GeoBase has the capability to have their funding sponsor information um, show up. So if I can go ahead and quickly, I'm just going to choose just the GeoBase records. I do like to click on the number. I'm going to limit it to just those. And indeed, so this is one difference with GeoBase that's very nice. It was a bit of a happy, a happy circumstance in something we were doing with other databases. But what this does is it will show you your, your funding sponsors for the different research being done. Um, and we can, again, I like graphics. That's my, my preferred way. Um, so from that point, um, what I'm going to do is take a minute to pause and I'm gonna share what I call my roundup slide. Um, you're gonna temporarily see the Amazon again, which is never a bad thing. But ultimately, GeoRef and GeoBase better together on EV. That is what this whole program has been about. Um, side by side, these two databases are truly partner databases in the sense of coverage and really give you a comprehensive view. Being able to deduplicate them side by side, solid index, truly helps one discover more faster with confidence. The EV platform assures uh, the, the resource to be living and breathing and as the status of they continue to build in their respective disciplines. As new features are developed, they're applied to the abstract databases as relevant. It's a mission with the engineering village team and myself and my fellow customer consultants to continue to grow these really great features. We love suggestions. We really do from our customers. We want to see if, if there are other facets you'd like to have added. So do reach out to your customer consultant or suggestions online. Um, the quick visual drill down of the mapping is a unique feature. It's not available on other a &I platforms in this way. Visual, represent, visual representation in the context of data is, is typically preferred um, and it's carefully curated data. So that is super valuable. And then last but not least, working, saving time and finding those perfect articles or resources working smart and working hard. I'm going to say and working hard because I'm not ever going to say it's not hard because honestly the beauty of this platform and its databases is that you as an individual searcher or researcher really have specific control over your search, your workflow, and what you want to see. So not always immediately visible in other platforms or even even choosable. So with that I'm going to pause and thank everyone so much for your attention. I know my moderator, Louis Smith, will now be assisting me with any questions that may have come up during the session. I am passing to you, Louis. Thanks, Gary, for your presentation today. I'm going to launch a second poll and ask you if you could uh, select the appropriate box. So let me launch the polling now. I'm also going to see in the question and answer if we have any questions here. So yes, we do have some questions. And we are having some results coming in for the polling. So people will use GeoBase and GeoRef in the future. Perfect. So this is the first question. Can, okay. I, can, I, can I only use GeoRef and GeoBase together or may they be combined without a database in Engineering Village? 
Absolutely. Um, you can utilize um, those two databases with any of the other um, databases that currently live, can live on the Engineering Village platform. Um, in fact, I think the most powerful way to utilize the tool is the more, the more resources, the better. Um, we typically will see Compendex and Spec, GeoRep and GeoBase utilized very effectively together. Um, so I would highly encourage that. Yeah, thank you, Kerry. That was great. So the second question is, can I get the journal article through the platform? Ooh, okay. Um, yes, uh, you can. Um, so it is an abstract and index database. So we want to be um, aware that what this platform is giving you is really the, the understanding of whether or not this is an article that if you don't have access to it through your subscribe provider, because remember, we have 190 or so different resources or publishers that are being represented, that if you don't have that arranged to um, get delivery of full text, um, that you know very specifically what you really need in order to perhaps make that purchase. But, but that is all available right through the platform itself. Perfect. So I have a third question here. How often is GeoRef and GeoBase updated? I know you show some numbers of the articles we have, but uh, you know people want to know how the platform is updated. So we have a weekly we have a weekly update here at um, Engineering Village. So it it is a weekly basis, and of course you know the the editions are going to vary depending upon what the output is but it is a very much a living and breathing um, resource. And that also includes that if there are fixes to the fields that you says, I guess isn't the right word, but maybe additional discoverability added to the fields um, that will also be applied. So I would say every, you know, every week is, is, the, is the standard there. Perfect, thank you, Carrie. So that's all the questions we have, and we want to thank everyone for attending today's sessions. So we are hosting these seminars every Thursday at noon Eastern time. Our next, next session will be aircraft corrosion, six main suspects, and that will be at noon Eastern on June 25th. If you could like information or invitation to that session, please feel free to reach out to your customer consultant. If you don't know who your Elsevier customer consultant is, please reach out to Carrie or myself and we will be happy to provide you with information. And if you would like information or recording from the past webinars, so if you can scroll the, the next slide, uh, Kerry, do you have the, the list of? Uh, I do. Yeah. So you can reach out to your customer consultant or to us. These are the previous webinar we have um, done in the previous weeks and they are recorded that you can access offline. So thank you so much for your time, your attention, and your interest in Engineering Village. Thank you.